Welcome, folks, to a brand new episode of the world's most interactive music podcast, Smoke em If You Got Them. The premise of the show is real simple. We're going to choose a record. We're going to listen to that record, side A and side B. Before we press play or put down a needle, whatever it is you do, you're going to roll one, you're going to smoke it, you're going to listen to that side and come back and talk to us. We'll do the same thing again for side B. Now, for today's choice of record, I turn the microphone over to the Oracle of Oxford County, Mr. Jeremiah Charlton. Ladies and gentlemen, today we're listening to a band called Sandos, and the mm. album is Pay Attention. And if you ever, if you actually know what Sandos is, you should be paying attention right now, okay? <laughs> <laughs> the name of the band is Sandos. The name of the record is Pay Attention, S-A-N-D-O-Z. You can find it anywhere you find music. What's, um, what's the rules? What do they got to do? Well, this is this is a simple thing. You got to focus on what we're doing. Drop your phone down, and and sit with us and really go down. Now, we've talked about this before. Don't feel weak. Go down to the joint. Go down to the side. Do another joint. Go down that side too and join us. Smoke them if you got them. Let's listen to side A. Let's go there. Smoke if you got them. <laughs> Sandoz, pay attention is the record we're listening to. Yo, you want to give some background to the people here? So I found this um, looking for John Goodsell. Okay. Who, who's the guitar player for Brand X, uh, the Phil Collins progressive rock group that he played in the 70s besides, obviously, Genesis. Yeah. A lot of cool people played in, in – uh, in that band, so lots anyway, of really cool people played there. I was looking up uh, stuff with him, and uh, so this was his first band. So I looked it up, and in the interview, he said he was like, "Oh, we were just trying to uh, do our impersonation of like Captain Beefheart meets uh, Grateful Dead." Wow! And and uh, here's something amazing: there, he's a teenager. He's 18 years old. Lead when this singer, record is happening. Lead singer and lead guitar player on that record is 18 years old. Wow. And you know what? That description to that to the album is completely accurate. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, it's really cool because like uh this is a couple a couple other bands we've had are like basically like homage bands in their own way. You know, we talked about the band like Archaea with yeah. Magma. Yeah. You know, and uh moving Latin plates type thing too, you know. All, all these different bands that sort of like were younger. Uh, yeah, and they and they have they're completely aware of their fandom, and it's a love letter to to the bands and the artists that inspire them. But with a, a high level of um, you know playing, which a lot, very a lot of, very high level. Lot, I mean, teenagers don't have like except that you wouldn't think by his vocals or by uh, the guitar playing he's eighteen years old, right? No, folks, if you if you have which I find that weird if you're listening to this uh, to this podcast uh, you should go listen to it but you know it's 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 uh, whiskey it's whiskey shots and uh, you know rusty nails that's just what it is it's it weirder, than, like an weirder, weirder than this but they you can see like they're trying to do like some like blues bass rhythms and then do some strange things on top of it strange breaks and what's what's interesting is he they, he said he had at the time they had no idea of like odd time signatures or, like what that right. was they just were like trying to write quote unquote weird riffs. <laughs> and but you know what though the the freshness of the concept, because maybe there wasn't any guidelines around, hey, we're trying to set out to do this technically, it just sounds it sounds aggressive. It sounds punk rock. Yeah. Which is sounds... why it sounds like the beef art too, right? Right, right. What what year was this album uh, put down, Sandoz? Uh, I think 70, 70, 71. Wow. Wow. This, so this is, this is a short 71, record. 71, I'm sorry, yeah. We listen to two songs here on this A-side, two Apple tracks, Core yeah. Machine and I Ain't Strong. Yeah, now this was and, never officially released. This was like, I guess they said there was 1,500 original copies of it. Mm. Um, I don't see any of the original copies online at all for, at, wow. for sale. This was like a reprint. Uh, 95, a CD company put this out. And there, um, and there's also a cassette reprint in 2012. Yeah, it's yeah. super limited. So this is like this is beyond limited. Like, 
uh, experimental, weird, quirky type of music that you really haven't heard before. Now, uh, you want you want to fill in the uh, the nice folks listening to uh, to smoke them if you got them. Uh, who's in this band? The only one that's fake. Uh, well, no, it's not true. Uh, Rick Parnell is the drummer, and uh, he 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 played in Atomic Rooster. There you go. Which was like a hard rock band, you know, like and and that's how. And then John um, John Goodsell, and then Goodsell, obviously, yeah. he he played in Atomic Rooster. Also, he got him in Atomic Rooster. So he was nineteen playing with Atomic Rooster. This this album, he's eighteen. Wow. Next year, he's in Atomic Rooster, and uh, they were still famous at the time. So they were doing pretty big gigs, you know. Yes. Yeah. And uh, then he got the gig with uh, Phil Collins for Brand X. Yeah, which is you know it, it it's a, quite a step up from uh, what we're talking about money wise. But man, this is uh this is such a interesting and different short record, you know. Um, yeah, it, it's it's interesting uh, to see how many of the records that we've listened to. First of all, don't sound like young people behind the music, right? We've got a couple of bands that you're like, all right, yeah. these guys are 17, 18, and, but the music is so strong. And then you see what happens after these releases, and it makes sense that they go on to be bigger names, right? Yeah. Um, folks, if, you, if you're just joining us, turn back and start the podcast over. But you're listening to the world's most interactive music podcast, Smoke Em, We Got Em. And we're listening to Sandoz Pay Attention. Uh, is it time, time to go to side B? It's time you felt it. You want you, you want to give time. you want to give the folks uh you want to give the folks some encouragement. You got to roll it up one more time. You got to yeah. step up and say, you know, I don't know, I feel pretty I'm pretty high right now. No, no, no. Do it. Do it for John Goodsell. He was he was celebrate. 18. There you go. Celebrate your own damn independence and John Goodsell's prowess yeah. here. Yeah, he's he trying. 18 years old for God's sakes. Like he was what do doing. You think he was doing. <laughs> the name of the band is Sandos. So you should be putting acid in your eyeballs at this point. Listen to this album for God's sakes. Well, folks, that's what that's what I do. That's what I do. Let's go to side B. Side B. Still strong, G. Side B is uh, still strong. I got to kick off with this. Yo, this dude, the name of this track is Demigod. And this track is 13 minutes long. It's an attack on the senses. It feels all right. This this record, like, when you make limited edition albums that are like hidden music history and shit like that, albums like this is why you do that. I love I loved this track more than the first, more than the side A. I really love this side. Yeah, I liked them. I liked them both. I don't know which one I liked better. That's yeah. tough. That's a tough one. Um, but this is super strong, obviously, you know. Yeah. Very strong. It feels like at certain points the jam almost gets away from them. Like, you know, they're just rolling on through. And, uh, you know, this is a 13-minute jam. Uh, this is a very ambitious concept from people that didn't even know technically what they were doing. They were just doing it for the sake of doing it. And, um, man, it is it is very special. You know, it is very special. Uh, did you have anything in particular that you liked in this area? Well, you can you can you can get this uh, pretty seems seems pretty uh, cheaply right now online. This uh, ninety five it seems to be around fifty bucks US. So hey, that's not bad. Get one from ENG. and and these are all limited editions too, right? Correct. Like, so yeah, limited edition numbered, yeah. Well, they, I mean, folks, you just don't know about bucks. this album. This this is like I said, I came across this like this was not on a list that I came across or anything like that. This was. Just an interview by a guitar guy because I'm a guitar nerd. So, I I went around looking for a little bit more info on it because uh, for the first time, you know, with all the sources that we look up uh, info here, including uh, the Oracle, man, there's not a lot of information here. I mean, this is a really underground sort of hit. Yeah, I, I was pleasantly surprised. When I went. Very, very. I, I just looked it up surprised. because because of his description, right? I was like, well, if it's anything like Beefheart, like it's going to be cool, right? And automatically the drums on the track one, like he heard it, he was, he's, he's going for it, you know, trying to be like Drumbo. Oh, definitely b far like sneakers and the dryer drums, and we're trying yeah. to cling on to any sort of rhythm that happens more than once. Now, we need to talk about one thing on this uh, side, too. All right. Um, can we talk about guitar 
tone. Oh, oh, I'm so I'm so happy you said that. I'm so happy you said that because we need, uh, we need to have a talk with a lot of famous guitar people who yeah. are known for having good tone. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean this this is your world. Please go ahead and and and, and inspire the folks here because it is a serious thing. Well, you you could you could put this up there. I'm not again. I wouldn't say this is number one with a bullet, but if you said, "Hey, this is like the the, the one of some of the best in terms of like heavy guitar tone, in terms of all chord wise, like when he crunches, oh. and also when he plays the high like high single notes too, right? It sounds really big too. It doesn't lose any power. I think so the I'm sure dissonance he's using a, a, a Les Paul. I'm, I'm sure. Oh, that, for sure, sure, Les Paul, the Marshall Stack type thing. But he just had a really good sound going. Yeah. Somehow. Um, now Hendrix is dead, so like we can't uh, disparage him. But I mean, he, his his tone to me is as good as as anyone's that you would sort of hear of the time. You know, maybe like some like Jeff Beck's might be better. But it just um, sits in a different place because this this tone is warm and crisp, it's right there. And yeah, it's and it's right in your face. And we're talking. I mean, especially in on the B side of this album, uh, there's a lot of energy. There's a lot of sound. There's really very little uh, silent or low volume spots. It's great, like uh, Richie Blackmore from Deep Purple's or same time period. His tone. Yeah, the tone is so crunchy, so up in the front. It's almost recorded like mainline vocals. Now, usually these records that you know people didn't spend that much money making, um, they they were recorded so so terrible. Everything just sounds like paper thin or whatever. This really does not. The the tone uh, to this album uh, for the guitar is just. I'm glad you said Hendrix because you can feel the tinges of blues bass sound for Jimi Hendrix in all of this. But then the attack is different. Oh yeah, he's yeah yeah, it's a little bit more metal. Yeah, the attack. That's exactly it. But for seventy two, the type of metal 71, that he's playing. Yeah, seventy one. Yeah, that's that's heavy. John Goodsell was uh, was building a mystery here that that is really damn cool. Um, you know, like we said, folks, this is a cheap album. This is a reprint. You know, the latest reprint of this album is on cassette. So if you want to talk about exclusivity and exclusive material. Sandos is kind of the way to go. The label that put out the cassette uh, version is called Acid Punk. There's very little information on this band, but there is a hell of a strong record here with Sandos. Pay cool, cool attention. Art. Did, you see, did you see the second? Like, there's the main one, but you see the other art where it was like for like the the Grim Reaper. So the the artwork that I saw looks like a bunch of um, Mayan Indians uh, in. in in formation like walking towards you with yeah, that's on bones the, and pay attention on the, on the on the i think on the other side though there's like a uh an emblem like a golden emblem it says sandos in black and it's like a grim reaper but it's dope it's really cool oh i gotta i gotta see that one i did not i, did, I was not able to see that one the one that i'm looking at the vinyl rip that i'm listening to here has this which at the same time is trippy as hell like like what you were saying earlier if you don't understand what Sandoz means, look that up because you'll get what they're trying to go for here. And, and this was this was totally uh, self funded by uh, basically like these are high schoolers again. These like their parents paid for, and they did like the recording at the local reco- record studio in their yeah. hometown. They made it sound great. So, wow, fuck you guys. Okay. There you go. Yeah, there's there's really no reason for anybody to not no. do it. I, I I'm 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 stoked about this. I have found a version of it for twenty five dollars on vinyl that I think I'm gonna put a bit in right now because hmm. that's hard to find. Yeah, there no. you go. Sh- Shagrat Sh- Records ENT zero yeah. zero four. Check that shit out, man. Well, what what do we have in store for this week, man? Like, where are we going? Uh, tomorrow we're going to. Uh... A band. We're going. We're going back to Germany. Nice. Germany just has so many good bands, right? And so many different eras too. So and different, different. Uh, so many, so many different bands under that big genre of kraut rock that don't sound anything like each other. So, yeah. Where where would you actually? Where would you put? San- I was trying to categorize, even though we don't like to do that. I was trying to categorize Sandos, and I felt more like it was like almost nineteen nineties desert rock than Prague or Kraut, you know, but it's uh, hard to classify. Well, it's sort of psychedelic blues rock. Um, 
it's it's his little bit a bit proggy, you know. Yeah, it's got its moments. It's, it's got a little bit of prog in it. It's got it's it's more psychedelic to me. Yeah, acid blues maybe. Psych- psychedelic acid blues, sort of like thirteen floor elevator, sort of. Um, well, that's that's that, that's really as close as I can get it. I I want to do something special for this episode because we're we're nearing episode number twenty of Smoking If You Got Him, the world's most interactive music podcast. Uh, and I'm gonna play uh, as we finish the show. I want to play one of the tunes here um, for for the folks that uh, that don't listen to the record when we do ask them to. Uh, I want to play. How do you say? I ain't strong. You feel good about that one? Sure. Well, we're going to walk out with Ian Strong, and uh, I'm G. Jeremiah's over on the other side. We'll catch you tomorrow on Smoke Him If You Got Him. Smoke Him If You Got Him. <laughs>